that the cause, the cause of spiritual advancement is desire. Your sincere desire. If you really want the absolute truth, Krishna will arrange to reveal it to you. Krishna will send his representative, either through a book, through a website, through a video, or some other way, through a friend, or, you know, who knows? He, he's very original. He's very creative. <laughs> he can come up with all kinds of things. I heard a story one time from a devotee. I, I used to have this hobby. When I was a devotee and, and I was in ISKCON and like that, uh, I would ask devotees, how did you come to Krishna consciousness? And this one devotee told me a story that was just amazing. He said, I was, uh, I was very depressed. I was at the end of my rope. And uh, what happened to him? Something, his brother died or something like that. His brother or his father died, I think it was. His father died and he was really depressed. You know, there's nothing like your parents dying to make you aware of how fragile this life is, and that we're all mortal and stuff like that. So anyway, he was contemplating all these things. And he became very depressed because he didn't have any solution. One of the causes of depression is if you have a problem that you can't solve, isn't it? You have a problem, but you don't know how to, how to solve the problem. So you become depressed, and he was depressed, and he was drinking, and he, he had decided he was going to commit suicide. So he's sitting there with the whiskey on the table and the gun sitting on the table, and uh, he's... Uh, really in a bad mood. And I think he said he was in his brother's, yeah, that's it, he was in his brother's house. He wasn't even in his own house, he was at his brother's house. And his brother and his wife, the brother's wife, were away on vacation. So he had the whole place to himself. He was all alone, drunk, sad, you know, the gun's on the table. <laughs> He's like ready to do it, right? He's just like passing his last night uh, alone. And they had a shelf of books that ran all the way, like just under the ceiling of the room, all the way around the room. And he was just sort of like looking at these books, you know, and he sees this one book, it says Bhagavad Gita. He goes, I wonder what that's all about. I've never heard of that book. What is that? And he goes and he picks up the book off the shelf, he starts reading, and he's like, wow. <laughs> and, he, and he passes through the whole night, and the, the sun is coming up in the morning. He's still reading. <laughs> After that, he, he, he forgot all about the bottle, you know. <laughs> he just he throws the bottle away, took, takes the gun and puts it away, and he keeps reading. <laughs> He found the solution to his problem. That's everybody's problem. That we have to die. Or that our loved ones have to die. Huh? Or that, you know, something in this world that we're attached to has to go away. It's everybody's problem. Everyone is suffering because of that. You think you're the only one? No, to everybody. So Bhagavad Gita indeed has the solution for that problem because it has the key to eternal life. Right there in the second chapter. And then from there it gets better. <laughs> eternal life, that's easy. Huh? We can handle that in the second chapter. <laughs> <laughs> it's a joke, Christian. Hey, the boss told a joke, you know what I mean? <laughs> All right. <laughs> oh, boy. It's like, look at me. No, don't look at me. <laughs> Ha, 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 ha.
Oh, Krishna. We, we like to make fun of cults, you know. <laughs> Some people think we're a cult. <laughs> I think they actually have a subconscious desire to join a cult. But we actually don't want those kind of people, so <laughs> we just say, yeah, yeah, we're a cult, whatever, you know, get out of here. But anyway, Bhagavad Gita has the answer. And uh, I forget now, what was the question? <laughs> well, the question was about whether karma follows the body. Oh, the yeah, 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 yeah. So when a person is, is suicidal and like that, this means they're suffering under heavy load of karma, huh? unbearable. But of course, if they don't go ahead and kill themselves, then there's even worse karma, and the next life is even even more difficult. You know, you think this earth, planet, is the worst that things can get? Ah, oh, I got news for you. You haven't read Srimad Bhagavatam. <laughs> you know, I got good news and I got bad news. <laughs> The, uh, the, the heavenly planets are, are much, much nicer than this earth planet. And the hellish planets are much, much worse. So don't do something that would cause you to lose this human form of life and go to those places because they're horrible. Horrible. So anyway, uh, yeah, we have, we have the key. Any result that you get from devotional service is eternal. Because devotional service itself is eternal. And of course, Krishna is eternal because he's spiritual. That's the difference between matter and spirit. Matter is temporary and spirit is eternal. Huh? You know, it's the simplest thing, but it has very, very profound consequences. Oh, we have a question from the audience. Yes. No, Peter. So you just said that the results we get from devotional service are eternal. So that means it changes our consciousness eternally? If we don't commit any offenses, yeah. But has the potential to do that? No, it does. It does it. It does that. It does it. But if we commit offenses, we delay the manifestation of those changes. Try to okay. understand. It's like you're carrying this big bag of rocks. Huh? And I say, here, take these diamonds. Huh? The diamonds are just little, but you can't take them unless you put down your rocks. So the rocks are like the offenses. Huh? They're mm -hmm. worthless, they're heavy, they're, they're, they're nasty. They slow you down, weigh you down. Huh? So without, even though you already deserve to get the diamonds, if you don't put down the rocks, you can't receive them. See? So the same way with devotional service. Even if you already earned some benefit from devotional service, if you don't uh, let go of your material attachments and create offenses because of them, then you can't receive those benefits. So the benefits are there, but they're delayed. They're delayed until you overcome those offenses. That's why offenses, especially offenses against devotees, are so, so dangerous. Because even we may do devotional service, and we may earn some eternal benefit, but we can't receive the benefit because the offenses are blocking it. See? Like the bag of rocks, huh? we have we have all these rocks, and we can't we can't take anything, you know. So until we have to put that down, get finished with those offenses, then we can take the benefit, receive the benefit from our devotional service. I mean, devotional service is so wonderful. I mean, actually, any child can understand it. But Krishna is the most beautiful, most kind, most lovable most wonderful person that there is. So when we meet a person like that, of course we're going to love him. Huh? But our difficulty is that we can't love. Our hearts have become hard, closed. 
see? So we can't love. We have lost the ability to love because of our offenses, because of our material consciousness. So when we meet Krishna, even though he's the most lovable person, the most beautiful person, we can't, we can't love him. We can't just open up our heart and say, ah, oh, Krishna. Huh? That's why oftentimes you know, Krishna uh, will benedict uh, innocents, women, children, you know, uh, because at least they don't have any offenses. Very, it's actually very easy to love Krishna. Krishna is the most lovable person. But because of us, because of our attachments and our material nonsense and our offenses, we can't love. We can't love anybody. I mean, if we can't